Hi, this is Daniel, and today I'd like to show a simple game I've designed in Unity implementing various audio systems using Pure Data and NZN Audio's heavy compiler. In addition to the many patches created in Pure Data, I also focused on some gameplay programming, creating an immersive world, and adding my own audio samples to the Unity engine to complement the synthesis and audio systems in Pure Data. The art assets were found in the Unity store. This project would not have been realized without a great number of resources I used to draw inspiration and help from. For more information, I have added links to these resources in the video description below. The concept of the game is a simple race against the timer. If you reach the finish line before the timer ends, you win. If you run out of time before reaching the finish line, or if you fall, you lose. You can collect points along the way, and there are also some generative audio systems that I will explain later on in the video. This is the control patch for the main audio systems and pure data. Unity sends events to these receive objects, which then begin playback on the various sub patches and abstractions throughout the entire project. Upon crossing the start line, a message is sent to pure data to cue an explosion and start the timer. This is a synthesized explosion borrowed from Andy Farnell's Designing Sound, which consists of various layers and parameters that can be controlled. The timer subpatch consists of the main functionality of the timer itself. Once the time start receives a bang, a timer begins to count up and trigger various abstractions that have been synthesized to sound like a clock. There are three components to the clock. The beep, which is simply four oscillators stacked on top of each other. The switch click main, which is noise input through the left and right channels with a slight delay and variance in the bandpass filters of the right channel to give a wide stereo image. And lastly, clock underscore all, which is a patch taken from Andy Farnell's designing sound and used to work within the scope of the project. This abstraction functions similarly in that it uses bandpass filters and noise to synthesize the various components of a clock. When the clock begins counting, the metro object sends a bang to the incrementing timer every two seconds. After 30 seconds has elapsed, that is when the counter reaches 15, a message is sent to increase the timer to beep every second. Basically, at specified intervals, the counter is doubling its speed to give the player the audio cue that time is running out. If the player crosses the finish line before the time runs out, a wind sound is triggered. When triggered, several things happen. A message is sent to turn off the sound of the clock underscore all abstraction, and another message is sent to this inlet, which plays the wind sound consisting of two different frequency modulated sequences. At the same time, a zero is sent back through the system into the timer, which essentially shuts off the metronome and restarts the counter. Additionally, a bit of logic is used to ensure that if the player steps back over the finish line after the timer has elapsed or the wind sound has played, the wind sound cannot be triggered again. It states that if the counter has begun, only then can the spigot object open up to allow the wind arp and wind sound to play. Losing can be triggered either by the timer running out or by falling. In either case, the same logic as winning is applied to turn off and reset the timer. If the timer reaches 70 on the appropriate outlet of the select object, the downer abstraction will be triggered. If the player falls and hits the respawn trigger in Unity, a message will be sent to pure data to also trigger the downer abstraction. Throughout the race, the player has the opportunity to collect crystals. When collecting a crystal, a message is sent to trigger a counter in the subpatch points counter, which represents a MIDI number transposing all pitches up a half step in the sequence of the subpatch crystal each time the counter increments. After 10 increments, when the counter reaches 78, a message is sent to the other sequence in the crystal subpatch to notify the player that all the crystals have been collected. For fun, I have the volume levels alternate between the right and left channels each time a crystal is collected to create some stereo movement. When the player dies or teleports back to the beginning of the map, the points counter is reset in pure data to ensure that the chromatic sequence starts from the beginning. The crystals are also instantiated back into the map upon death or teleporting. Additionally, each time a crystal is collected, a time bonus is awarded to the player by subtracting one from the counter back in the timer subpatch. patch. 
Lastly, I created a simple sidechain signal that reduces the input level of the beat part of the timer each time the crystal sound is triggered. I created a generative ambient system which consists of three patches. The first patch is the key changer, which essentially selects a new random key every 88 seconds. The new key information is then sent to both the bass and ambience patches. The time interval of 88 seconds is used because it lines up with the rhythmic structure of the bass patch. Three part motif of randomly selected pitches is played four times and then a 16 second rest occurs. After this structure is played through twice, a random key is selected from the key changer patch. The bass tones are all perfect fifths produced through ring modulation. In ring modulation, new frequencies occur at equal distances above and below the carrier signal. These distances are proportional to the frequency of the modulating signal. I've carefully selected the appropriate carrier and modulator pairs to ensure that the two newly created bands are always a perfect fifth apart. In this patch, the wet-dry signal is randomly being modulated so that you're hearing different combinations of wet and dry signals. The tones are randomly selected from the select object to create the generative bass line. The final patch is the ambience. Like the bass patch, the pitches are a mix between the wet-dry randomization of the ring modulation. The patch also receives the key change bang every 88 seconds. In total, there are 12 pitches oscillating at the same pitch in various octaves. Every 3 seconds, a bang sends out a random amplitude to each individual oscillator to change the overall color of the entire ambience. Pitches closer to the fundamental frequency are more likely to be on the dry side of the ring modulation, controlled in the respective RM patches, in order to maintain some tonal foundation to the overall ambience. I also have randomness of the overall amplitude for each individual oscillator. This randomness will periodically turn off the oscillators to allow the patch more room to breathe. You can connect and disconnect individual oscillators from the final gain stage to shut them off permanently. I've used and modified various generative wind concepts from Andy Farnell's Designing Sound. The wind is controlled by noise, filters, and other signal processing. Inside the level, I've set up four different wind emitters in the corners of the map to set the overall wind ambience. I've additionally placed various wind emitters at key areas throughout the map to help bring the ambience more to life. So thank you for watching, to conclude, I'll leave you with some uninterrupted gameplay.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>